<laughs> By the end of 1973, ELP had released five albums in three momentous years, each of them a massive success, culminating in their masterpiece, Brain Salad Surgery. For any rock band to achieve real success, they need to crack America. ELP were no exception. Emerson, Lake and Palmer in America was extraordinary. The people in America loved the band. English bands were popular at that time, but Emerson, Lake and Palmer, they played every town in America, and every town in America they could sell out an arena, and everywhere they were loved. ELP were, were something you had to go and see. I want to hear Emerson, Lake and Palmer. By April 1974, ELP had conquered America and were headlining the massive California Jam Festival, where they played to 350,000 fans. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. I'm so glad you could attend. Come inside, come inside. There behind the glass stars a real blade of grass. Be careful as you pass. Move along, move along. They had two PA systems. It went back so far that one PA system wouldn't go far enough, so they had another one halfway back to, to play. It was a, just a massive uh, gig. Show in hell and hell you gotta see the show. It's a dynamo. You gotta see the show. It's rock and roll. Rocky boy, eyes we pull it up from the sky. Once you're underway with those sort of performances. Um, the nerves and everything disappear and you play and it just unfolds like any other show would. No, except when the response comes, of course, it's coming from 600,000 people instead of 6,000 people or whatever it is. For four years, the ELP live show had been growing as a theatrical extravaganza. It climaxed at the California Jam. I was more influenced by guitar players, I think, than other keyboard players. Uh, guitarists like uh, Pete Townsend, Jimi Hendrix, and I was probably a little bit jealous about the guitar players that could roam around the stage and check out the audience. You know, I wanted to make the Hammond organ like a part of me, to be mobile, but it wasn't easy to make a 350-pound piece of equipment move with you on stage. With Keith, when he got on stage and that vehicle was really working, he lifted the audience through his playing and his antics on stage like nobody else did at that time and not many keyboard players have ever done since. in particular wanted to do things that were ever expanding. If there was a new piece of technology from Mr. Moog, Keith wanted it. I mean, Keith wound up with a what looked like a kind of one of those old-fashioned telephone keyboards that you sometimes see operators, you know, plugging into, you know, like a demonic telephone operator with, on stage, you know, putting plugs in. I think by 72, beginning of three, we were really kicking. We were starting to look at whatever pyrotechnics were available or allowed, whatever could be done technically, how much can be transported. But to have three articulated trucks with your name on the top, jammed to the gills with equipment, was extravagant. But the public loved it. At the California Jam in 1974, ELP unveiled their latest piece of rock theatre. <laughs> 